The scripture reading is found in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 1 to 8. My son, do not forget my teaching, but keep my commands in your heart. For they will prolong your life many years and bring you peace and prosperity. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and humankind. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him, and he will make your path straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. The word of the Lord. Amen. Jesus. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 admonishes us to trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. This is an interesting text, which is a text all about trusting God rather than ourselves. When we trust ourselves um, our, and our understanding of things, uh, rather than trust God above ourselves, we get mediocre results because we don't always have the facts. We can't see all the possibilities of our choices or the alternatives that God establishes or the better way that he intends. Uh, when I was 21 years old, I purchased my first car. I was a new lieutenant, just commissioned, excited to be mapping out my own life as an officer and having my independence, and my dad went car shopping with me. And as we shopped around, in the context of my budget, and in those days, the Salvation Army had a very stringent rule about what you could spend on a car. Uh, my dad said, I don't think you should get a car right now. I think you should wait. Um, but being 21 years old, I knew everything. And so I said to him, now I need to get a car. And so I purchased the car. And long story short, for the next three or four years, we paid dearly for that error, for that lapse in judgment and wisdom. Because had I listened to the wisdom of my dad, who was a mechanic and really knew his way around vehicles, he could have uh, led me to a much more productive result and outcome. Proverbs is something like that. Proverbs is, is, um, is written like a father advising his son or his children. It's like God advising us. It's dad saying when to buy the car and when not to buy the car. Proverbs talks about values, it talks about peer pressure, it talks about the dangers of peer pressure, it talks to us about how to behave when we're in relationship with other people, the wisdom to see the bigger picture rather than just what's going on right in front of us. It talks about being wise and how many of us discover wisdom after we've just kind of messed everything up and we've done all the wrong things and we're paying the consequences for our choices, and then wisdom comes to light. And God says through Proverbs, it doesn't have to be that way. If we put wisdom at the front of our living and decision-making and processes, there will be a very different outcome. And so um, the encouragement with Proverbs that I find is that even though I'm living with the consequences of some of the choices that I've made unwisely, Proverbs says it's never too late to start over. It's never too late to begin where you're at and do better by listening to the voice of wisdom. Trusting God is hard because it leads us in places that want to improve our situations and make life better for us, but we find it very difficult to trust what we can't see. And that's not to say there are not consequences for the choices we've made. We still have to live out the consequences of bad choices of moving and living and breathing in the context of our limited understanding when we fail to seek God's will and trust the Lord for his guidance. You see, our understanding is blinded. It's blinded by lack of knowledge and information. It's blinded by emotions. It's blinded by hurt and betrayal by our desires that are often against God and what is best. 
If we seek his will, we're told that God will show us the right path to take. And the end result will be success and better days of purposeful living. There's that critical phrase in verse 6 that says, seek his will in all you do. Now, the, the, the truth is, if I were to be honest with you and bear my soul a little bit, quite often the reason I make unwise choices is because I'm often not seeking God's will. I'm, I know what I want, and I know um, where I want to go, what I want to achieve, what I want to acquire, and so it's about me, and I make the decisions in the context of my understanding and in the context of what feels right for me. Uh, but quite often God is saying, no, that's not how I want you to behave. That's not how I want you to decide. That's not how I want you to reach the decision-making process that you're in. I want you to trust me so that when it doesn't make sense to you, you will then allow me to um, come into that dynamic. It's not to say that the choices we make are wrong or that the choices we make are sinful in and of themselves or that they fail entirely. Sometimes we seem to do okay. Uh, we seem to have fairly successful, appropriate, or reasonable outcomes. So it's not that it's those things. But I am led to think that sometimes the alternatives are not as successful as they might be. That they're not the optimum results that God would desire that would happen if he were invited into the equation. You see, it's hard to trust God, isn't it? Because we've got trust issues. Um, it's hard to trust God. And sometimes it's not so much that we can't see him. It may have more to do with the fact about what we can't see. And trust ourselves into that. But we're invited this morning to trust God with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding in all your ways. Acknowledge him. Seek his will. He will direct your path.